<laughs> we had a rule during that scene. Don't make eye contact with each other. I like I could not stop from laughing. So like <laughs> I couldn't look at him. I had to look off and like just pretend that he was right there, even though he was here. <laughs> I, I have the same rule with my mechanic when he's massaging the hose. <laughs> I just I can't I can't look at her. <laughs> This is David Stark from Watcher Pass, and I'm joined by Danielle C. Ryan and Matthew Lawrence of Double Threat, which is coming to digital and on demand on June 3rd, 2022. We're going to talk to them right now. And while you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. I'll spend a lot. Thank you. So thanks so much for joining me. This is Danielle C. Ryan and Matthew Lawrence of Double Threat, which is coming to digital and on demand on June 3rd, 2022. It is an indie action comedy that has a star who has to kind of play double duty. Danielle plays a character that has a couple personalities and Matthew plays the poor soul that has to kind of manage them and also make sure that she stays alive and gets to her destination. So thanks so much for joining me. Yeah. Poor, poor soul. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Sound my character's <laughs> endearingly poor soul is that better <laughs> yeah it lightens the blow a little i guess Thanks. there we go uh so i guess the first question is danielle so who do i have do i have danny or do i have l like which character are you going to be today probably danny okay danny's the the mild-mannered calm person you're not going to like you know reach through the reach to the camera and beat me up if i ask a bad question are you nope that would be danielle okay is, danielle's the nice one we'll, okay. we'll go with danny today she's a little bit a little more feisty. Okay, perfect. Well, that's <laughs> <awesome>. <laughs> I saw I saw what you did in that movie, so I am a little afraid of this interview. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's just start talking about the movie. This is not your first uh, run together. You both were in the other action dark comedy movie uh, Mistletoe Mix Up, right? That was a uh, that was an action <laughs> movie. <laughs> that actually came after Double Threat. Oh, oh wow! Just came out before. <laughs> So is that like a sequel? Can we think of that as like the canonical sequel to Double Threat? <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Perfect. So uh, I guess, yeah, how did you then get involved in this film? Like, it sounds like, I don't know if these projects were together or if you like did Double Threat and you're like, we like working together and now there's this other project, let's move that along. How did you kind of get involved in Double Threat? Um, I kind of got involved with, um, so Shane Stanley, the director, and um, the other producer, Kurt Patino, we all kind of put this together with the writer, CJ Wally. Um, we were kind of just like, Hey, let's do something. No one's doing anything during COVID. Let's do something by the end of the year. And we kind of just threw this together and ran with it. That's perfect. And so, uh, Matthew, how did you get involved? Were you, did you kind of get on early or after like everything was kind of arranged? You were like, Hey, I no, also want to do something. They, they had put everything together and then they reached out to me. So I, I was lucky to get the call. And then, uh, and then I loved working with Danny, so I returned the favor because Mystical Mix-Up was a movie that I made with my two brothers. We wrote it and we, uh, we, I always wanted Danny from the beginning after I worked with her. And uh, so when she said she was going to do it, it was great. And uh, Danny, how many people do you kill in Mistletoe Mix-Up, just out of curiosity? That's a secret. Okay. You, have to watch <laughs> you don't actually know it was all behind the scenes. Ah, but... <laughs> I got it. That's part of the mix-up. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I do have to ask, where was this film? Because so I grew up in Santa Clarita, and it looked very much like where I grew up. So I, I, was it filmed like around that area? It was. Yeah, there was lots in Santa Clarita. We did um, quite a bit in like out in like Acton area. There was we kind of went all over the place, but the main lot that we filmed in was in Santa Clarita. <laughs> I was looking. I was like, this looks very familiar. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we filmed at um, a ranch shown by Mike C. Ryan. That's awesome. And how long? Uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah the same <laughs> initial. Yeah. Okay, got it. Interesting how that works. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so this was during this was during the pandemic. So like, how long of a production was it? Did you kind of have a lot of time because nothing was going on, or did you not have much time because everything was kind of fluid and, and no one really knew how long you'd be able to film? It was pretty rapid. I mean, I'd say three weeks. Mm -hmm. It was about three weeks. Yeah. We kind of we kind of put a rush on this one just in case, and we had very small skeleton crew. Um, we tested every other day. They were, you know, we were very efficient with all of our COVID protocols. And one time I was really worried because I 
it was cold. We were shooting during winter and I guess I had my heater cranked in my car and they were temperature <laughs> checking. I got out of the car and I was 105 degrees. Oh, wow. And, uh, they were like, whoa, you can't go anywhere. Go home. It's like, no, no, no. I'm not sick. I just had the heater way up in my car. That uh, it's funnier when it happened. No, that, that I mean, <laughs> but like in that time, right? Like we can all laugh about it now, but in that time, you, everyone was kind of really nervous. And so you didn't know, yeah. like, is this actually a COVID symptom or do I just like go like throw ice on my forehead and like now I'm, now I'm 70, I'm good, let's go. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's weird too, because we're acting like this close to each other and then they call cut and then they make us put on masks and face shields. And we're yeah. like, we were literally just in each other's face. Yeah. <laughs> like it's not, it's not gonna do anything. Yeah, it didn't make sense that part. <laughs> yeah, wow. Well, you know, gotta got follow protocol, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this came together pretty quickly. Uh, Danielle, how much prep were you able to do? I mean, this has this has you doing some hand-to-hand combat. Has you doing some weapons uh, training? Like, had you done any of that before, or were you just like, did you do a whirlwind prep right before this filming? How, how did that work out? I've done a lot of it before, so it was it it came very easily. We had one rehearsal with um, Dr. Haim, who's the the stunt coordinator, and he's just incredible. So was the stunt team that he brought on. So we did one rehearsal day and then we kind of just went, went for it while shooting. That's I, on the other hand, I needed months of preparation. <laughs> you, I mean, I, those accounting classes are hard, right? You had to like do some very, taxes and get your, get your bank accounts in order just in case something went wrong. Right. <laughs> so, he, exactly. he nailed the driving though. That was, that was impressive driving. <laughs> you did nail the driving. Yeah. And, I mean, I know indie films don't always have the best budget. Like, did you do your own stunts? Because I wasn't sure. I couldn't tell uh, if, if you were both like doing your own stunts during this movie. Yeah, We, we both did everything. Wow. That's putting, putting your bodies and souls into this movie. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> um, and Danielle, like, so you, you play someone with two personalities. Like, were you drawing on different facets of yourself for these two distinct characters like was or was that something you just created like wholly for this film like it was kind of fun to see you switch between them throughout and you kind of like tell you know if you're Nat or if you're Tasha and, and even your mannerisms kind of change so I was just curious how you mm-hmm. kind of created those two um I kind of based it off certain people that I know <laughs> not gonna name who but there are certain people that I would pick up on their mannerisms and just kind of reenact that and kind of put that into the character I think I think Matthew is probably Tasha, right? Like Matthew seems like the kind of action-oriented star. <laughs> I channeled Matt yeah. deep in my soul. I channeled Matt. I mean, especially when, especially the horseback yeah. riding scene, like that seemed like a right. really kind of Matt yeah. thing to do. Yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. And, yep. and like, I don't know what did it kind of slip into method? Like after, like when they called Salt said cut, and you had to like put your mask on. Did you slip into these characters like throughout the filming, even when you weren't on set? Because I imagine it must have been easy to do. Or, or was it like, are you a, once the camera stops, like I'm back to Danielle, I'm me? Um, it was, no, it's pretty easy for me just to kind of switch back to, to myself. Um, usually sometimes when you do like really dark roles, which these two were not, you kind of tend to stay there a little bit. Mm-hmm. But this one was easy just to snap back into me. Awesome. And um. Matt, what was it like, like having an action movie where you basically, <laughs> like, you let Danielle do all the action? Like, that must have been the best kind of situation when you're like, all right, you're going to be living movie. now, okay? There's, you know, <laughs> guys, you know, can totally be protected by by the lady in the room now. So it's, uh, no, I don't know. It's, it's, um, it was fun, actually. I love being able to make fun of myself, be self-deprecating. I think that's that's one of the wonderful things about comedy. Um, so that's always fine. There were a few times that I wanted to get in there and throw a punch just to show that I could <laughs> just to, you know, set the stage. That's for the, that's for the sequel, right? When you start to kind of yes. develop, uh, Matt and, and, and Thu, I guess. Or, or... It's a funny way to start actually. I'm yeah. training and then you pull out and I'm like, <laughs> not training for fighting like you would think of training for like, I don't know. You're in a simulator. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're secretly in a VR thing that no one knows until they pull out. You have the head goggles on. Right. Right. I mean, that, that is kind of like the wars of the future, right? Like, you'll, just be, yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll yeah. be controlling the drone and it'll be this amazing drone pilot backing up, uh, yeah. backing up Tasha. Yeah. But I did, yeah. I did love, you know, 
like I imagine obviously you're an actor and you're professional and you're, you're doing this but I did love how you kind of like fully embraced your character because I imagine there's an inclination for like if we're in an action movie I want to help out I want to do something but you've kind of fully let uh Nat or Tasha do the work that they were supposed to do and you kind of were there for support and I love that that aspect kind of came through you were really able to like fully let her do her thing so I uh, didn't really have a choice. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I, that's what I liked about the character, honestly. I liked that he was kind of like, you know, not what you would think at all. Very much fish out of water when it comes to action. So that's cool. Sure. And, and so this film filmed first and then Mistletoe Mash, Mix Up, Mistletoe Mix Up came out, like filmed second but it came out first like was there any reason other than just like the normal aspects of an indie film where you're just like it's gonna take a long time to get this out like like something you know editing can take a while or distribution can take a while was there any reason why this film came out second or is that just kind of how indie filmmaking is yeah that's how indie filmmaking is but also this movie was specifically geared for christmas so it had a christmas release we knew that we had to turn it around quickly for that holiday season so it was just a matter of that, really. I mean, if it wasn't a holiday movie and had a specific time that it needed to, to reach Amazon, uh, we would have probably been, you know, sitting on it longer and trying to get a better sale and all that kind of stuff. So it's just, it's just the, the nature of the two types of movies. I guess, yeah, I guess you're right. A Christmas movie does have a, a very specific time period. Yeah, it's got to be released or, you know, and then you wait, if you wait another whole year, then... <clears throat> who knows I mean, oops, sorry. you gotta like i just kicked danny but um you gotta you know you gotta really you gotta get it out there get the strike right in that one month period or you lose yeah for sure although i guess maybe you could have like christmas in july i guess that's a thing sometimes but uh that probably doesn't have as much of a draw as christmas christmas no no yeah not as much sure uh, so I know we have limited time, so I'm going to switch. I call it the uh, lightning round. They're just lightweight questions about the film. I want to see how your personal experiences map to things that happened in the film. You can feel free not to answer any of them. I won't be offended, but I try to keep them very answerable. Cool. All right, first up, uh, the film starts with uh, Natasha working in a, like, retail store. Have either of you ever worked retail? No. Pass. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I've never worked retail. Well, it's it's an experience i'll, I'll tell you that <laughs> yeah. do either of you have like an, an alter ego like a stage character you know like garth brooks has chris gaines and beyonce has like sasha fierce do you have someone that you try to like channel when you go on stage or is it just kind of different for each film so you don't really need like an overarching alter ego different for each film yeah same there's not one specific thing i guess that makes perfect sense when you have to kind of take on new characters yeah <laughs> Uh, you are entering a fight. What do you have? Do you have like a rifle, a pistol, a bow and arrow, a knife, or just good old fisticuffs? Or maybe you don't fight. <laughs> Can I choose multiple? Of course. Um, 1911, AR-15, and a knife. You are experienced. And then like when it. all those go out, then you got your good old fist and your elbows. If, if you've gone through all of those and then you have to rely on your fists, like I am, I am very worried about your opponent because that person has it, been through it a lot. It depends. How many people am I fighting? That's true. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> You're like, lightsaber. <laughs> great choice, actually. That, that is a I want a lightsaber choice. for sure. That would, yes, no, I agree. I want a lightsaber as well. Yeah. I was going to say samurai sword, but lightsaber. That's the best of both. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Um, yeah. <laughs> have you ever repaired your own car? Yes. Yes. Excellent. That was that was a fun scene when you're like, yeah, like breaking down in Santa Clarita was always one of my biggest uh -huh. concerns because it's hot and no one's around. So <laughs> we had a rule during that scene. Don't make eye contact with each other. I like I could not stop from laughing. So like <laughs> I couldn't look at him. I had to look off and like just pretend that he was right there, even though he was here. <laughs> I, I have the same rule with my mechanic when he's massaging the hose. <laughs> I, I can't I can't look at her. <laughs> Don't look at me, man. Just, <laughs> don't look at me. It's a job, right? You're, you're doing it's a performance. You have to put your all into it. So <laughs> I've tried. Um uh, kid. Could either of you fly a plane? 
Yes. <laughs> if it was an emergency, I could probably figure it out. No, you can't. Go. You couldn't even fly to this. That I almost, I almost took off by accident because I really revved that plane and uh, I didn't realize, they told me not to, I, didn't, I mean, I did realize, they told me not to do this and I did it anyway because I was nervous, I think. Just want to, you know when you're supposed to hit the brake and you hit the gas kind of yep. thing? Yep. That's what I did, yeah. Well, you know, I'm glad that you followed the protocols and didn't take off, but hey, uh, if you would have, maybe, maybe when you were flying, like your alter ego would have taken over and you would have been like an ace fighter pilot and you would have you never known. Man, I always wanted to be a fighter pilot. I think, I think we all did. I think everyone wants to go see Top Gun Maverick and be that fighter pilot. <laughs> Gosh, man, that movie. Oh. We need to get on Star Wars. Lightsaber, fighter pilot, I think. Uh, I know. One is somewhere in the in the Star Wars multiverse now because there's so many they've got going. I'm, yeah, I'm sure that they can fit you into like a movie or a side movie or one of the 15 TV shows that are coming out. Yeah, I sure know. Yeah. I just watched Obi-Wan. Oh, nice. The two-parter. It's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, I love Ewan McGregor. He's he's awesome. I love Ewan McGregor too. Let's talk more about Ewan McGregor. Uh, he's he's a, just a fantastic actor who has a long. He's, he's so good. So I good. love him, man. He's in that commercial. He was talking and he's just at a commercial and he like just to hear him talk. You're like, wow, I could totally buy that. Nobody does that for me. Like, I, I should get that. There you go. I don't Andy know what he's talking show. about. Andy has a cameo in Double Threat, right? I wish. Yeah. <laughs> that, would be that would be so cool. Maybe that's my dad. Mm. Oh, there we go. Gregor. He has a he has an unspoken cameo. I like it. Yeah. Um next question. How are you at pool? Because there's a prominent scene that takes place at pool on the pool table. Good, good at pool, bad at pool. Decent. Yeah. I was never good at geometry, but what am I? I don't know why. But yeah, so the angles are sometimes. As, you know, I was good at geometry, no. but when you're actually like trying to sync those in, it, it sometimes is very <laughs> difficult, right? It's not depends on what you're doing on the pool table. That's yeah. You know, that I mean, I assume we're talking about the game of pool, right? But, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, you just make sure you don't want to scuff the the, the pool felt because that that stuff is tough. Right. To that was a yeah. note actually we got. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Please, because you have mic packs. You know, this is it's still kind of awkward. You know. And, yeah. So I'm on my back, and I remember they're like, "Oh, is, are you going to scratch the? Don't scratch the pool table." I was like, "Well, you want me to roll over? How do I roll over with a mic, metal mic pack on my back without scratching the? I think I think it got scratched." Yeah. Uh, you probably had a security deposit, so it's it's all good, right? <laughs> and in that scene, did you also have the rule of no eye contact? Just just out of curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Don't don't look at me. Don't look at me. <laughs> It's a very tough, very weird scene, but luckily the camera work fixed it all, so it looks perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, They're always awkward. <laughs> uh, next question. Do you like Nickelback? Yes. Don't hate me. I don't hate you. They're some good, they've got some good stuff. I've seen them live, and they're great. Oh, excellent. Get all you want. It was a very prominent line, so I, I had to ask, and I'm glad it came through. Um, yep. <laughs> When was the last time that you were at the beach? Uh, three weeks ago. Florida. One week ago. South of France. That sounds lovely. Um, and the last question is, where would you like your ashes scattered? On my favorite place where I ride my horses. Up in the hills. There's one special spot that I have. That's where I would have mine. A deserted island somewhere. <laughs> just just yeah. any random deserted island? <laughs> yeah, I mean, so maybe, I don't know. Probably, the, out to Catalina. probably the Caribbean. <laughs> the Caribbean. I'm saying Catalina. Now, now, Matt, are you going to have Danny fly a plane out and scatter your ashes on that deserted island? Perfect. Fly. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm going to die first. Uh, but <laughs> always does this. Just talking to my house, he's going to die first. I think isn't statistically don't uh, don't women just statistically live longer than men? So yes, that's yeah. true. But I make poor decisions and do weird stunts and and so he's the safe one. Yeah, 
Well, I mean, you both seem healthy and happy, so I imagine you'll both have very long lives. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe there won't be islands by the time that you both die. Maybe it'll just be one long sea of water. You can just throw your ashes out the window. So <laughs> I'll do it out the plane. There you go. Uh, and so the movie comes out on June 3rd, 2022, digitally and on demand. So anyone can check it out from the comfort of their own home. Uh, you both are out promoting it. Uh, what do can people look for after they see you in Double Threat and also you know, Mistletoe Mix Up? Um, I have one, another film coming out with Shane Stanley called Night Train. That'll be coming out soon. Um, we... we're, we're working on a sequel to the Mistletoe movie. Oh. Yeah, so that should be, we're looking to shoot that this summer. So that should be coming up, which could be fun. Is that going to be another like rush to Christmas event as well? Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. If right. we do it this summer, it'll be out for Christmas for sure. Well, I love I love that you all are like still working together. Like it was it was really fun to see you on screen, and now you can continue to see this uh, partnership evolve through multiple Christmases and hopefully more action movies as well. So, <laughs> absolutely, yeah, we got lots of lots of movies we want to make. Actually, perfect. I can't wait to see it. So this, thank you so much for joining me. This is Daniel C. Ryan and Matthew Lawrence of Double Threat, which comes to digital on June third, twenty twenty two. Thank you so much for your time. Cool. Awesome. Thank, thank you, you so much. Awesome. Thank you. That was Danielle C. Ryan and Matthew Lawrence of Double Threat, which is coming to digital and on demand on June 3rd, 2022. It's an indie action film that has some really fun leads, some comedic moments, and some decent action. If you liked this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you.